This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey friend, I'm gonna show you how I turned this useless hallway nook in our new basement suite into a live streaming webinar giving Zoom call presenting workstation and also review some of the knickknacks that I'm using to make this all happen from microphones to keyboards and also show you one of my favorite hacks of all time for using a teleprompter to get a setup that looks like this. Here's me overlaid with my presenting slide for my webinar. I can switch to my main camera, talk to you like this. I can switch to my side camera like this. I can switch back to my main camera. I can go back to my slides. I can explain things straight to you, the viewer. And what you don't know is that it looks like I'm looking at you down the lens, but what I'm actually looking at is my notes. I'm reading them, staying on track, still building a good connection over the live stream. I can advance my slides. I can see which slides coming up. I can see the timer of how much we have left in the presentation window, all without you never knowing that I'm actually looking at notes. To show you a contrast, like this is what it looks like when I'm looking down the lens. And if I turn over here to look at my side monitor, it's a really big difference of my eye line. So if I'm over here reading notes, it definitely does kind of break that connection point with the viewer at home. And an important factor about this whole setup for me is that this is modular and that I can easily pack things down and take it with me on the road and adapt and kind of change things on the fly. An issue with this setup is the lack of space. Uh, in my previous live streaming setups, I've set up my cameras on tripods behind the desk and then try to get as much depth in the frame as possible. We're squeezed right in here. Uh, I've got the light off to the side, but one thing that I was realizing is that I was trying to use a small tripod on the desk, but again, anytime I like bumped anything, the camera would shake and that drove me nuts. So I'm using a French cleat system on my wall, also to store some other things like calendars and whatnot. But essentially what that is, is just a wood 45 degree angle attached to a surface and you can move this around anywhere. And this means that I can mount my camera to the wall instead of having it mounted to a small tripod on the desk. So this is what I'm using to mount my camera off of and get it next to my monitor. So I've got this small rig arm that's a handle that was meant for, I think a gimbal, but I have it mounted to NATO rails off this plate and then a ball head here that we can mount the camera to and a small monitor coming off the bottom, kind of all in one setup. And what I appreciate about this is that it's not hard mounted in one spot. I can move it around and change angles. Okay, I'm about to go through each piece of gear that I use to accomplish this setup, talk about pros and cons. Before I do that, one of the funnest ways that I've been using this setup is to do these live call-in shows with my audience, where I talk to someone on video live, answering a question, reviewing one of their films. This is just a really fun way to interact with the audience. If you wanna be a part of one of these calls, I highly recommend you hit the bell, turn your notifications on, make sure you set it to all notifications because these are totally spontaneous. And if you don't have those notifications turned on, YouTube isn't gonna notify you when I go live. And if you're enjoying this content in general and you want other people to see it, please hit that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. It honestly does, it's so fast, it's free. So please click that. Thanks for supporting my channel. Let's go over the main pieces of my setup. I've got a Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, which that's what takes my camera inputs and makes them available on my computer. That's also what I run the MacBook into so I can capture that display and the sound from the MacBook over HDMI. So I'm running just three main inputs so I can just cycle between those like that. And using Blackmagic software is also what I do, the little circle overlay of me in the corner. It's not perfect, but it does it does work sort of well. And then I take that into OBS. That's my main streaming software. That's how I do my audio delay from the microphone into the computer. I'm running a USB microphone, the Shure MV7. I'm running my stream through OBS because it's a really, really powerful tool. It lets me play media back over my streams. And then I can hijack that signal for whatever platform I'm going on. So if I'm going straight to YouTube, I can just go straight to YouTube. But if I wanna to go to Zoom, I can use something called NDI Tools, which lets me set OBS as a virtual camera that I can then select from within inside Zoom. So that's a really powerful way to use this. A benefit about running the two computers is that if I'm doing a heavy task on one of them, the other computer can focus on encoding the stream and sending it to the internet. Another tool I find very helpful is an Elgato Stream Deck. So I can cut through my scenes with the buttons and then I can mute and unmute my microphone and I can select different inputs. So I don't have it utilized to its full capacity, but even just being able to quickly mute and unmute my microphone is very helpful. And having that with the icons light up, it's a very helpful tool. So this is what my setup looks like on a normal day. Uh, the one monitor, the cameras are all ready to go. I turn on the power switch, the cameras boot up. 
I'm ready to stream within moments. That's what's really important to me. So there's less friction. So this is kind of the main configuration here. And obviously I'll cover some of the other configurations in a sec, but I've got my program monitor here coming out of the ATEM so I can see what camera inputs I have available to me. And as I switch them, it'll show me which one is actually live for the live stream. Over here, I'm currently looking at the PC. So the, the HP NV15 is what's on my main monitor here. But if I switch over to the camera input, I've got the MacBook as a display captured into the PC for live streaming. So I'm doing that through the ATEM. I'm running two computers. And the main benefit for this for me is it simplifies the screen sharing onto live stream process especially when it comes to workshop mode with this setup where I can have presenting notes on my teleprompter and the program display and also have other windows that I'm pulling up on the PC. So separating out those two computers might seem like a little bit of an overkill, but if you've ever tried to deliver a workshop on your own through, uh, through a laptop and you've got the presenter things and you're trying to wonder what does the chat think about the sound and all those layers, having multiple computers really helps simplify that process. So what I like about this setup is that it's modular. I don't have to have the two computers here. I can tuck them in the shelf behind, run them both into the same monitor. So here I am on the MacBook, and then I can change my input, go over to the PC. So I'm over here on the PC. I'm now controlling that computer. And because we have the MacBook as an input into the ATEM, I can actually see what the MacBook is doing on that computer as well. So I can be running things on the Mac, like playing a video for my live stream through the MacBook, and that sound is captured via HDMI into the software and I'm controlling that all from the PC. So it's like I'm controlling two computers at once on the same window. The first big area that I want to talk about is audio. And you can certainly follow the timestamps down below if you want to skip through sections. But audio, I think, is the most important part about any live streaming or recording of workshops. And you do not want to miss out on optimizing your audio setup. So let's talk pros and cons of this mic. I'm happy with this purchase. I like that it's small and portable. I like that it's USB, so I don't need an audio interface to use XLR. So there in the back, you get XLR, but I can run it via USB. It's got a headphone out port, so I can monitor the sound directly without any latency through software. Uh, and it does sound tonally good. It's got a nice natural broadcast E sound, but not fully going down that route. And it is the little brother of the Shure SM7B, which is kind of the legendary broadcast mic. And this is slightly more affordable than that, but still an investment. And it's got some hiccups that I really, that annoy me. Uh, I hate that it's a micro USB. I can't understand why in the world they did that in 2021. That just makes no sense to me. The pop filter that comes on it is this dinky little piece of foam. So if you're like me and don't have professional miking technique, this thing is so thin and flimsy that you really do get a lot of that plosive sound through the microphone. So one of the first things that I did is replace this with the pop filter meant for the SM7B. It fits on just fine and it definitely does improve that plosive performance. And then a DIY mod I made to this microphone is I mounted a physical pop filter to the casing of the microphone. So you can get them on bendy arms, but they're just really cumbersome and in the way. And I love this small pop filter design. So I drilled and tapped holes into the side of my microphone and this setup for me is ideal because it, it I don't need as much miking technique to really get great sound out of this. I'm running this mic on a Rode PSA-1 suspension arm. I'm fairly happy with it. I use them on these quick release plates so that I can move quickly between what stand I'm using it on and not have to fiddle with the screw. And it's just very easy to pack up this microphone and take it with me on the road. Something that I can't stand about this microphone is that it's noise rejection through the boom arm appears to be less, le it's not as good as its older brother. So it, like clicking on the keyboard that will come through the boom arm. And, but then every time I touched the desk, but then every time I touched the desk, those little sounds frustrate me. I, I don't like it when I just bump the boom arm and you can really hear it in the microphone. But then every time I touched the desk, that's probably one of my least favorite things about this mic is how much noise it picks up through the boom arm. And you can help that by mounting it on a mic stand that's not attached to your desk, but I'm trying to save space here. So mounting it off the desk is the easiest option for me. When I'm on the road and recording in the van, I've got this mix pre, so I can just mount the microphone quickly on top, run a short XLR cable 
in between the two and record straight into it like this. I'm pleased with this microphone. I've been using it for voiceovers with my videos and also for live streaming and podcasting and it's been working really well. So I would buy this again. There's just some some of those annoying little things that I wish I knew that I before I bought it. And there is other options that are much cheaper. You can get mics for 70 bucks that sound fantastic. Again, I'd steer you towards a dynamic microphone. I've got some links below from Harris who's got some wonderful videos on various microphones. So I certainly would check those out. I wanna take a quick moment to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform and they're my absolute favorite way to build a website. Something that I really appreciate is that they've got these gorgeous templates that are ready to go, made by professional designers that you can put your content into, customize, and make your own. Their drag and drop website builder is really intuitive to use. You don't need any coding experience. There's nothing to upgrade or patch ever. And if you run into any issues, they've got award-winning customer support. So if you've got a business idea or a project you've been working on, I recommend you take that next step and actually give your idea a home base, a website. Squarespace makes this really simple to do. You can head over, start with a free trial, and then when you're ready to commit, make sure that you use my code for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. By using our codes, you really do help the channel, so thank you. My background's a little messier than it normally is because we've got lights and stands and things going on for recording this exact video, but I wanna talk about lighting real quick. So I use the aperture lights, I like that you can turn them off and on with a controller. Uh, depending on what your brightness is set at on your display, if your light's not bright enough, as you move windows around on this display, that's gonna reflect on your face, it's gonna change in your glasses, and it's kind of it's not a look that I appreciate. So the, the general principle is large sources of soft light. I'm running an Aperture 120D through a lantern, and that's my main key light right here. So if we turn the two, if we cycle through lights here, this is my key light. So you'll notice that there's some shadows that are undesirable over here. And then this is my fill light on that side of the face with a little color contrast going on. We'll touch on cameras and teleprompter in a sec, but let's talk about capture devices. So I'm using the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. It's a four input device, it's in 1080p, and it allows you to mix physically between the inputs before it gets to the computer. And you can actually go straight to live streaming platforms from this software so you don't need any in between so this is is great i would buy this again they've packed a lot in here they're doing stuff that other people aren't doing so keep going black magic but some of the annoying things that i have with this is that i don't understand why in the software i can't modify the picture size or overlay options of each individual hdmi feed and their upstream keyer is fine and i can use their picture and picture options but it just all feels a little bit more limited than i was expecting like i thought i'd be able to go in and customize the picture and picture settings that would then save to these buttons so i could just easily switch because i like using a circle and there's no it's it's a frustrating process getting a circle overlay and then every time you reopen the software it resets it so there's a workaround for it but it just feels more clunky on the software side than necessary and then it's still limiting me because i can't create different scaled versions of each camera so my main camera is at a 12 mil and that's a little wider than i would like so i'd love to be able to just crop in that hdmi input in the software just a little bit and it doesn't let me do that. So I wish that that was better. Now coming down to the camera setup itself, this is where the fun life hack comes in. I first saw someone do this where they were using it for interviews where the teleprompter was set up to an iPad display that had the interviewer's face on it. So when the interviewee was looking down the lens, it was as if they were talking to a person, but they're actually looking at a camera. And I've actually, I bought this for doing that and I've used this for certain interviews and it does work really well for that. But then also a great way to use it is for live streaming. So you can put your presenter notes up on the teleprompter, look through the notes towards the camera, and it will look like you're looking straight into the camera lens. And that's a pretty sweet setup. I know Caleb Pike does this as well. I think a few other people are using this for their Zoom calls. It's just a great technique. So I'm using my iPad and a piece of software I use here that's critical is Air Display. So it extends my Mac's desktop onto the iPad. But the critical part is that it lets me flip it horizontally so that way it's mirrored so when it comes through the mirror the text is displayed the correct way this whole setup here can mount to that arm on the wall and sit right next to my monitor so when i look through it it's as if i'm looking straight down the lens towards the attendees of my webinar my thoughts on this model of teleprompter i'll link it below 
it's all right. It's like six out of 10, five out of 10. It does the job. The, the fabric is, is very flimsy. The construction is just stamped steel. It's one that was on the cheaper end that could fit my iPad without breaking the bank, but I wouldn't necessarily say this one is that amazing. The, the hardware for moving it, it, it feels cheap. <laughs> it's not great. I know Caleb Pike has one that he likes, so I'll link that one down below as well. Because this setup's so big, if I'm just doing regular live streaming for my audience, I'll often just put the camera itself right next to the monitor and I can get the sight line of the lens so close to the monitor that the benefits of the teleprompter for my just regular live streams isn't as massive. Okay, so some considerations for whatever camera you end up picking. Uh, I would recommend running it off a wall adapter. So that basically means a dummy battery goes inside your camera and then you can plug this into the wall so that way you never run out of battery powder. Um, I like having dedicated camera setups that are just there ready to go for live streaming so I'm not always tearing it up, breaking it down. You don't have to break the bank on a camera here and the, the amazing results that you can get above a webcam are just, it's pretty incredible. So the Panasonic G7 is a really surprising good value. Um, any of the Sony A6000 series, basically you're looking for a camera that has a clean HDMI out signal so that way the menus don't end up in your live stream. So you wanna be able to turn that off and basically any camera that can do that is gonna work just fine to be honest with you. So don't stress about that too much. For HDMI cables, I'm just using the Amazon Basics ones. They work very well. They are durable, they do a 4K signal. I use these right on labels on both ends of the cable. So that way when I look at the top of the mixer, I can see where that cable is coming from. And then when I'm trying to line that cable up with which camera I can see on both ends. These labels are fantastic because you can write on them really easily and then the plastic tape wraps around so that way they don't fall off like other labels. This is just so easy, write on it with a Sharpie. For keyboards, I've finally found one that I really, really appreciate. I've been using the K2 from Keychron. This works well. An annoying part about it for me is the thickness of the keyboard and how clacky the keys are. This is kind of a mid-ish level mechanical keyboard that works well with Mac and PC. So you can function switch between three Bluetooth devices really quickly. But it did always annoy me in this specific layout, not having the option key on the right side, because I actually use that for a lot of my window resizing shortcuts on Mac. So I was missing that key on this setup and I was just, but I still like this keyboard. So I recently upgraded to the K1 and I'm really happy. It's lower profile and the switches uh, are less clacky. So you don't hear them as much as your on stream or recording sound. So I appreciate that. This layout to me is much, I like it better because I get the option key over here. Um, they didn't have the full size in stock or I probably would have gone with that. I got the aluminum cased version. The build quality is fairly fantastic to be honest with you. USB-C at the top. You can easily switch between a Windows layout and a Mac layout, which is really helpful for me. Another thing I take with me on the road in the van and never leaves my desk is this foldable stand for iPads or phones. The build quality of this one is actually really impressive. So you can easily position things where you like. It fits all sorts of different sizes of devices. And I like this a lot. So when I am writing, what I'll often do is put my iPad onto that and I'll take the key cron and I'll type into the iPad. I like writing on an iPad because it's uh, harder to get distracted because it's harder to multitask. So I, I often will write scripts, video ideas, uh, presenting notes onto an iPad. And this little folding stand is fantastic quality. The hinges stay nice and stiff. I've been abusing the crap out of this. And this is definitely a hidden gem from Amazon. So oftentimes I'll just have my phone set up like this right next to my monitor setup, and I really like it. I hope you enjoyed a look at my streaming setup. If you wanna catch me live, make sure you turn on that bell set to all notifications. That way you actually know when I go live because I'm very spontaneous with it. That's kind of the point. And uh, definitely let me know which questions you'd wanna know about my van setup and how I translate this gear to life on the road because that's a whole other video that I definitely need to tackle and I'd love to make it. So that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching and remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.